Ladies and gentlemen, can you hear me now? I wonder if it's showing up on the screen. Yes. Huh? Yes. Get back on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I apologize again. I am really disturbed by what's happening with this B Live uh, format. I know that it is not functioning like I want it to function. And I will look into it a little more when I get an opportunity, uh, as soon as I get off of this program. Okay, so those of you who uh, stayed around and you still chiming in, we want you to know that we appreciate your, your presence. And I'm gonna uh, go back to where I was uh, in, this, in this program. Now, uh, what, we, what we learned then is that this relationship, new self-honesty, it's based on Luke chapter 14, verse 25 through 33. That's the a children's core value. That's the youth core value. That's adults core value. And I was elaborating on Brother Winston, how he had talked to me about the significance of keeping your relationships in the hierarchy that Jesus established over here in the 14th chapter of the book of Luke. So after Jesus said, if you're going to come to me, if anyone comes to me, he has to prioritize his relationship with Jesus, uh, his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brothers, his sisters. Yes, and his own life also. Uh, he cannot be my disciple. Now, it has been almost 45 years and I have been uh, employing these uh, relationships, keeping these relationships in order. And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, it has blessed my life and blessed my family's life. And so I encourage you, let's get honest. What kind of relationships have you been having? What kind of priorities have you been placing? Have you gotten to know the people that God has ordained in these relationships in an intimate way, starting with your relationship with the Holy Spirit, Jesus, your father, your mother, your wife, your brothers and sisters, yea, in your own life also. And then in verse 27, Jesus said, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intended to build a tower will sit if not down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish, lest, hap, hap, lest after he has laid the foundation and he is not able to finish, and all who see it will begin to mock him saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. This passage is probably one of the most powerful passages in Christianity because Jesus gives us mandates on what it means to be true disciples. He gives us the cost of discipleship. And one of the things that the uh, new self-honesty core value is all about is being honest with these relationships. So I'm going to ask us now, uh, let's look at this year. Let's let 2020 alone. God has given us one more year. Jesus tells a parable about a man who had a fig tree growing in a vineyard and he went to look for fruit on it, but he didn't find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard for three years now, I've been looking for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any, cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? This vineyard owner represents God. And then the loving Jesus who represents the vineyard manager said, sir, leave it alone one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, cut it down. I want us to spend some time 
looking at 2020. And let's start out being honest with ourselves. I want you to take about three minutes to write down what you are unhappy about in your life in 2020. I want you to take about three minutes, two to three minutes to write down what you are unhappy with in 2020. Take out a piece of paper, do it on your phone. Write down what you were unhappy with in 2020. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> now let's let's ask ourselves, what is it that you were unhappy with in 2020 uh, that that you want to you want to talk about right now? A number of our people are not on the uh, feed right now because we had to cut things off. What is it that you were unhappy with in 2020? I'll start out and, and chat in your box. What is it? For example, I was very unhappy with being attacked by the devil and being bombarded with one thing after another, the pandemic, the problem of people uh, uh, dying consistently, rioting in the streets, the problems that were taking place in, in churches, not being able to be mobile. What is it that you were unhappy about in 2020? Now, someone says, what is this doing, uh, Brother Roach? Until you begin to be honest and get honest about specific things in your life, you cannot change things. You see, once I am able to own that I'm dissatisfied or I'm unhappy with something in my life, that's the beginning of change. If I'm not willing to be honest about something that I'm dishappy about or I'm unhappy about, then I will stay the same way. You've heard the expression, if you think the same way and you keep thinking the same way, 
you just get the same results. So one of the things that we wanna look at in 2021, what is it that you were unhappy with in 2020 so that going in 2021, you can make significant changes. So uh, uh, here's Wayne. Uh, Wayne says, Wayne Brown says, I fellowship myself, my energy toward God, my self-confidence and letting go of my past, accepting the life that I can't change and do nothing about. Okay, so one of the things that you want to deal with is, okay, you were unhappy with what I'm hearing you saying, the things that you cannot change. Those are good concepts. What is it that you were unhappy with in 2021? Okay, now I'm gonna move us on for the sake of clarity and for the sake of what we're talking about doing in this, in this, in this program. Okay, so stay with me now. The next thing I want you to ask yourself, let's be honest, okay? What is it that you were, write down what you are unhappy about in your health? Write down what you are unhappy about in your health. What about your exercise? What about working out? What about your emotions? What about the way you feel about your body? What were you unhappy with when it comes to your health? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what is it that you were unhappy about in 2020? Those of you who've had a chance to think about it, one thing that you were unhappy about, it's okay to, 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 to acknowledge that, but if we're talking about new self-honesty, what is it that you were unhappy with yourself when it comes to what happened in 2020, also when it comes to your health, okay? Let's start being Let's start being for real. Let's be honest, okay? Here is Carl Nichols. He says, my 2020 finances, I was unhappy about that. Now, Carl, what we will, what you are doing right now, if you never own up to what you have been unhappy about, you cannot change. Until you become dissatisfied with what you are not satisfied with, you cannot be satisfied. So Carl, I commend you for being honest when it comes to your health. He also, Carl also says, my current weight. Carl, you're speaking to a lot of other people. Were you unhappy? What is it that you were unhappy about when it comes to your health? What are you saying? You will never get what you want or ascend to the level of the things that you want until you begin to be happy, uh, be uh, uh, honest about where you are so you can go where you want to be. I commend you. Uh, uh, I commend you, Carl, for being honest. All right. Wayne Brown says, having a stroke just simply shut me down. Man, I appreciate you so much, uh, Brother Brown, for being honest. I know you were unhappy about having a stroke. Okay, now that you're owning that, what do you want? What can you do to change that? How can you be honest 
going into 2021. See, the problem with a whole lot of people, they won't be honest in 2019. They wasn't honest in 2018. They wasn't honest in 2017. So you the same way in 2021. And until we begin to be honest with ourselves, new self-honesty, the honesty and truthfulness with myself in my single most important relationship with the Holy Spirit, which affects all of the relationships in my life. But I got to, first of all, be honest with myself. Thank you, Wayne, for being uh, uh, vulnerable and honest there. All right. Nate Davis says, weight gain during the pandemic because I wasn't exercising consistently. Well, Nate, I'll tell you what, you just identified what a whole lot of people are dealing with. A lot of people gain weight because we were confined. We could not go about where we wanted to go about. We, it, it was difficult to exercise a lot of times, but guess what? At least you're honest about it so you can acknowledge it and going forward in 2021, you can change, okay? Uh, Doug McHenry says, I'm unhappy with my vertilago. Uh, I think you pronounce it vertilago. What that is, it's a disease of the skin that causes spots to be on your skin. And I tell you what, that is so devastating for a lot of people. But I tell you what, Doug, I've watched you over the years and you did not let that shut you down and you did not stop living and you did not give up and you're continuing. I wanna give you a love deposit for being honest with your vertilago. I think that's how you pronounce it, vertil vertiligo or vertilago. Uh, it's a disease of the skin that causes spots to be over your body in different places. But guess what? At least you're honest about it. Now you can work on changing or uh, uh, developing the type of attitude that I think you've already developed. And that is going on with your life. Amen. He goes on to say, very self-conscious about it. Well, Doug, you know what? You never could tell. I'm, you have to be self-conscious about it. But you know what? Many people who know you couldn't, they really don't see that in you because you continue to go on with a very positive uh, deposit attitude. We appreciate your honesty. And then uh, here's Carl again. How does that connect with being content? Whoa, that's a great, great question. We all have to understand there is some things we are unhappy about that some people just in, ignore. You got a lot of people who are single and they're unhappy with being single, but they act like they're not. Or you got a, you got some women who say, well, I don't need a man. I don't want a man. I don't want a woman. But in reality, in some cases, not in every case, they really do. But a lot of times we give up and giving up is not being content. Being content is understanding what's going on so that you can try to do things better. And one of the first things you have to do, you have to be honest. That's why I'm saying, let's get honest in 2021. Okay. So it looks like the, the, the relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit is the way I begin to work through my stuff and then my relationship with Jesus and then my relationship with significant others. Okay, Carl comes again and he says, being dissatisfied and being content, are they rivals? Great questions. Being dissatisfied is different than being content. Being dissatisfied is the beginning of any kind of change. What we tend to do is ignore the fact that we are not satisfied and then we get stuck in the state where the devil uses it on us. Being content is when I come to a point where I have worked through my dissatisfaction and I'm able to be content in the state that I am because I'm working on it either in my spirit, in my soul, in my body, and my attitude now is one of contentment. That's another good point there. Wayne says, Doug, one of my mentors, he's talking about Doug McHenry there, I'm assuming. Doug McHenry says, 
I was very successful as a bodybuilder and it ended my career. <clears throat> wow. So at one point in your life, you, uh, you were into building your body and it ended your career. But you know, Doug, they are, there are beauty uh, uh, contestants now who are coming out with the ventilago and they are showing it as beauty. Have you noticed that uh, there are is several uh, women who are beauty contestants and they are showing their ventilago and they are proud of it and it did not end their career. I can understand how it can be discouraging, but one of the things that you can do is <clears throat> you can come out just like those women and just own it and be proud of it. And today people are accepting that more and more. Appreciate your honesty there. All right. Jerry Graham comes in, says, good evening, my love bank family. Jerry, what we're doing is talking about being honest. Okay. And we're going into more detail. So I'm going to move us on here now. All right. Let's go next to, uh, uh, let's go next to where we were and let's, let's answer this next question. Let's be honest. Write down what you are unhappy about in your wealth. Write down what you are unhappy about when it comes to your wealth. Are you happy with your level of income? Are you happy with your 401ks, your retirement? Are you happy with your, your job? Write down what you are unhappy with when it comes to your wealth. Be consistent. Be realistic. Do you want a promotion? Do you want to make more money? Do you want another job? What are you unhappy about when it comes to your wealth? You see, until I become honest, until I get honest about specific areas of my life in my hierarchy of relationships that Jesus talked about, I cannot change. I cannot improve. I cannot grow. I cannot grow to the point of contentment where I need to until I become dissatisfied with what I'm unhappy with. Write down what you are unhappy with when it comes to your wealth, when it comes to your health. What were you unhappy with in 2020 as you get ready to go in 2021? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now here's what I want us to do. Okay, we ask you, let's be honest. What were you unhappy with when it came to your health, your relationships, when it came to 2020? Now I want you to take the time and be honest with yourself and ask yourself, what do you want? Okay, you were unhappy with some things in 2020. What do you want in 2021? You were unhappy with some things when it comes to your health. What do you want when it comes to your health? Do you want to exercise more? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to improve your body? Do you want to tone up your body? 
you first of all have to own what you were unhappy with. Then you have to ask the second question, what do I want? What do I want in 2021? What do I want when it comes to my health? What do I want when it comes to my wealth? What do I want when it comes to where I'm at? Ask yourself that question now and write it down, okay? All right, let's 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 take a few more comments here. I, I, I hate so much that we lost so many people with the, the uh, program breaking down. I am unhappy in 2020 about BeLive and I'm gonna have to get rid of it I'm sorry, because the way things is happening is it keeps cutting off significant uh, uh, messages that we're dealing with uh, on on this show. Okay, here's some comments here now. Here's Jeannie Barnes. She says, being dissatisfied is not being unhappy. You're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Okay, Jeannie, I want to question you and I want you to think about something. Being dissatisfied is not being unhappy. Well, is that true? If I'm dissatisfied with my weight, am I happy with my weight? If I'm dissatisfied uh, with my wealth, am I happy with my wealth? So dissatisfaction and being unhappy are connected together. It's okay to be dissatisfied because you're unhappy with the thing that you're dissatisfied about. So part of change is being honest with what you are unhappy with and what you are dissatisfied with so you can work on being satisfied and work on that which makes you happy with that particular thing. I appreciate your comment there that we're thinking together. Okay, all right, Doug says, my wealth, that's an area that he was unhappy with, okay? Carl Nichols says, some dynamic opportunities have crossed my pathway, but I have not yet reached financial security. Explain again the concept of poverty of the soul. <coughs> okay, poverty of the soul is when I want something for nothing. I squeeze blood out of a turnip. I'm always trying to get something free. I'm trying to get something from someone else Prosperity of the soul is when I'm constantly giving, I'm building my soul, I'm making deposits in my new self, uh, a prosperity account. And as I build prosperity of my soul, I no longer am plagued by poverty of the soul. Most people who have poverty of the soul are people who are always trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip. They're always trying to get over. They always want something for nothing. So part of what we have to understand is when you go to the restaurant, and you have a waiter who waits on you, bless the waiter, bless children, give where you can, give more, always give, bless people's lives. And when you do, you build prosperity of the soul and you can get rid of poverty of the soul. All right, great comment, appreciate that. Wayne says, I want to put God in front of it all, amen. That is very, very important based on new self-honesty. New self-honesty is the honesty and truthfulness with myself and my single most important relationship with God. So when I put God as the single most important relationship in my life, that is probably one of the major changes that could begin to help me to deal with things that I'm unhappy with as well as things that I'm dissatisfied with. All right, Jerry Graham says, sometimes I don't know how to make the right investments for my family. I want to be able to enjoy it without feeling that something is wrong with that. Whoa. Let me see if I'm hearing this right, Jerry. Sometimes I don't know how to make the right investments for my family. I want to be able to enjoy it without feeling that something is wrong with that. I tell you what, Jerry, you you, you made several points that one is sometimes you don't know whether or not you're making the right investments for your family. Okay, that's understandable. So you're not happy with that. So what you got to do is examine that to find out what are the right investments that you think you need to make. But then you said something else. You said, I want to be able to enjoy it without feeling like something is wrong with that. When you experience an area of poverty of the soul, when you get blessed, if you're not careful, you can feel bad 
are uncomfortable because you're blessed because the poverty of the soul is trying to rob you of your blessing. Let me give you an example. I never forget when we built our first house. When I built that house, it was in a neighborhood and I remember going on the back porch when we were building the house and I felt out of place. I felt like I had stolen something. I felt like I didn't deserve to build a new house in that neighborhood. That was poverty of the soul. It reminds me of when I was younger, when we would drive through predominantly white neighborhoods, I would feel guilty, like I was doing something wrong because I was in a white neighborhood and I had gotten comfortable and being used to being in a neighborhood that was predominantly white, a black rather, and in some cases uh, uh, in the ghetto. What was actually happening? When I experience poverty of the soul, when I get blessed, I almost feel like I don't deserve it. When I uh, am able to bless and be more blessed, I almost feel like something's wrong. I remember when I didn't feel like I deserved, I used to, I had some challenges with my feet. So I had to buy Johnston and Murphy shoes when they used to cost a lot of money. And I had to spend money getting skins, alligator shoes, because my feet were struggling. And I'll never forget when I would buy those shoes, somebody says, those are some nice shoes you got on. Those are nice alligator shoes. And then I would say, I got these on sale at such and such and such. I had to explain away my prosperity, my wealth, because I was struggling with poverty of the soul. I don't know, Jerry, I don't know if that helps you or not. That may be what you want to do. What's the answer to that? Build a preponderance of love deposits in your new self-prosperity account. And, and just make deposits in the bank of your soul until pretty soon you deserve to be in new shoes. You deserve to be in a new house. You deserve to be in the place where you have right investments and you can feel comfortable. And the more you build new self prosperity and love deposit in the bank of your soul in that account, you get to a point where you can be, you can be as rich as Abraham and feel rich as Abraham. But until you deal with the poverty of the soul, you can be as rich as Abraham and you'll feel like you broke as Job's turkey. Poverty of the soul is a fascinating concept. Thank you, Jerry, for that sharing there. Okay, all right, we're back here. William Smith says, tired of struggling with money. I want to make money without something, with something I enjoy doing. I've learned how to be appreciative of what I have. What he's saying is, what I'm hearing you saying is, you're tired of struggling with money. You want enough money so you don't have to struggle with it. You know, God has an economic plan that I always believe in. Here's what the Bible says. And my God shall supply all of my needs. Notice it now. If God supplies all, whatever you need is covered. If God supplies all, it doesn't matter what you need. So if you focus on the all, God's economic uh, plan, rather than the need, then God will bless you with all to cover the need. I really believe that. I got a son, he's uh, 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 he's doing very well. And uh, uh, he, uh, uh, he has a house, he had a beautiful house, lovely home, okay? He wants a larger home. He could buy another home now, but he said to me, not long ago, he said, what I want to do is I want to accumulate more money so I can buy the home I want in the neighborhood I want when I want it. You see, so my God will supply all. That's God's economic plan. And when God supplies all, you don't have to worry about the need. Amen. I don't know if that helps any. Okay. All right. Let's get ready. We're getting ready to wrap this up here. I'm not going to spend it more time, too much time in here because we lost a lot of time with, with this program coming up. Doug McHenry says, that was a correction to the immediate prior statement of wealth. We appreciate that, Doug. Okay. Wayne says, thanks. Okay. Jerry Graham says, you're right on that. I tell you what, you know, all the people who's on the show today, I believe that God kept you on the show today to bless your life so that you can grow. Let's be honest. We'll take off on this again next Thursday. 
We encourage everybody to be there and we're gonna talk about new self-honesty. Amen? Let it be so.